Can an automotive starter motor be used as an electric bike motor? Let's find out. A while back I made an electric drift trike using a giant starter motor from a Caterpillar machine. To my surprise, it worked quite well and since that project, I have wondered if a smaller automotive starter motor could work for EV applications. This is the 1.4 kilowatt starter motor which I'll be using for this project. The reason I'm using this specific starter is because it was an open box item on Amazon, making it one of the cheapest options. Here's a demonstration of how the starter motor would be wired in a vehicle. When I turn the ignition switch on, the solenoid is energized and the pinion gets pushed forward. The reason the pinion gets pushed forward is so that it can engage with the engine's flywheel. The starter then turns the engine over so that the piston can draw on a fuel and air mixture, which is then ignited to start the engine. All right, so this is the bike that I'm going to be mounting the starter motor to. And the plan is to mount it right here at the back, somewhere like this. But before I can mount it to the bike, I'm gonna to have to make some modifications. Most importantly, we'll need variable speed control. Here's a demonstration of the motor circuit with the addition of the speed controller and a thumb throttle. I'm using a 24 volt battery instead of a 12 volt battery because 24 volts is the minimum voltage requirement for my speed controller. As you can see, the pinion is no longer being pushed forward. This is because I have bypassed the solenoid as it will no longer be needed. Most starter motors come installed with bushings rather than bearings. This is because starter motors are designed to be used for just a few seconds at a time, making bearings unnecessary. But because I'm attempting to modify the motor for continuous use, my plan is to machine new end plates that will house bearings. I'll be making the new end plates out of 4.5 inch aluminum round bar. The motor shaft has these unique keyways for the Bendix assembly. I was able to make a sprocket hub by disassembling the Bendix, cutting it down, and then welding a sprocket directly to it. The sprocket hub is simply held in place with a shaft collar. I modeled the rear end of the bike in Fusion 360 to make designing the motor mount a little easier. I then cut the motor mount out of quarter inch aluminum plates. The only modifications that I had to make to the bike frame was welding on these two brackets for the motor plates and I was able to make use of the existing mounting holes at the rear of the frame. I fastened the controller to the bike frame using aluminum flat bar and a couple of cable clamps. Alright, so let's move on to the battery. The battery will be made out of these Headway lithium iron phosphate cells which have been provided to me by Battery Hookup. Battery Hookup repurposes millions of lithium batteries every year and provides affordable solutions to the DIY community. Sadly, millions of perfectly functioning batteries go to waste in landfills, get refined, or get shipped overseas. That's where Battery Hookup steps in and creates opportunities for reuse. Not only are they saving precious metals and natural resources, but many batteries are being upcycled into useful applications that make a positive environmental impact. If you're in need of batteries, check out Battery Hookup, and you can also use my discount code for 5% off your entire order. I designed the battery mounts in Fusion 360, which will allow me to easily fasten the battery to the bike frame. I then 3D printed all the parts and assembled them using M3 threaded inserts and screws. I had originally installed a 100 amp BMS on the battery, although I could just not get it to work. Through customer support, I was able to determine that the BMS is either broken or the firmware of the BMS is wrong and needs to be upgraded. This never got resolved, so for now I'll have to go without a BMS, which is not ideal. In the meantime, I'll be using a battery meter to keep an eye on the voltage, and I'll be charging the battery with an 8S balance charger. All right, ready? Yeah. It's gone. Oh, 
there he goes. Holy sh For the first test drive, the motor seemed to perform fairly well, although I had to stop after a few minutes because the motor got extremely hot. The test included me going up two large hills and mostly staying at full throttle. All right, so after that first ride, the motor is extremely hot, and it's actually so hot that I can't even hold my fingers on it. So I think it's safe to say that this motor has about a six minute duty cycle, which is pretty terrible. Starter motors are fully enclosed and have very thick sidewalls. When starting an engine, a starter motor generates some heat, but this heat is dissipated through the motor's housing and the surrounding air. The short duration of operation means that the amount of heat generated is not significant enough to require additional cooling mechanisms. But since I'm running the motor continuously, it's going to require some cooling. I ended up drilling multiple holes in each end plate and also drilled some holes in the motor casing between the field coils. Additionally, I replaced the rear 48 tooth sprocket with a 60 tooth sprocket. All right, so I've added a larger rear sprocket and I've also drilled some holes in the motor casing. So let's see how this second test works out. All right, ready? The second test went much better than the first. The motor did not get nearly as hot as it did during the first test due to the added cooling holes and larger rear sprocket, but the controller cut out after just 10 minutes due to low battery voltage. Two of the cell groups dropped to a terribly low voltage, and this is why you should always use a BMS. Not good, not good. All right, so the motor is much less hot than it was last time. The motor shaft itself feels really hot, but the casing is Pretty much just warm to the touch, but uh, that seems pretty good. Luckily I was able to buy a used 200 amp BMS from someone local and I swapped out the four cells which went below 2 volts. Alright, here we go. Everything worked well for the third test, although as expected, the PMS was cutting out at less than 10 minutes. The battery capacity of 16 amp hours was not enough, so I decided to try using a larger 36 volt 60 amp hour battery. All right, here we go with the 36 volt battery. For the final test, things were going really well, with the bike reaching a top speed of about 60 km per hour and climbing hills without a problem. But unfortunately, after about 15 minutes, the motor began to overheat and lose power. Oh boy, it looks like the motor is... <laughs> in conclusion, it's safe to say that a starter motor is not an ideal choice for an electric bike motor. Even with the cooling holes, the motor eventually ended up overheating. The starter motor is also inefficient and drains batteries very quickly. As you can see, if I limit the battery current to anything less than 200 amps, I can hold the bike stationary while keeping it at full throttle. This means the motor has to draw a significant amount of current to get the bike moving. I don't know how much current the motor was drawing continuously during each test because I don't have a meter on the bike, but I'm assuming it was quite a lot. With that being said, there are still many additional modifications that I could make to improve the bike's performance, such as improved gearing, even better cooling, and further adjusting the controller settings. But I can't work on this forever, so I'm going to end this video here. Let me know in the comments section what modifications you would make, or if you have any suggestions. I hope that you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.